high pressure ridge, which is on par with some of the tallest high pressure, the deepest and tallest in height high pressure ridges over the past many years of the most phenomenal events and record-breaking events, including the Northwest Pacific heat wave, is in the process of developing here in the Midwest. Right now, it's over the Texas area. It brought temperatures to 112 degrees yesterday, May 7th, in Rio Grande Village, Texas. Many other locations also rose above 105 degrees in Texas. And heat advisories have been issued. The National Weather Service didn't think they would have to issue a heat advisory in Texas, but they did. This high pressure ridge is going to be moving east, but for now it's over the Texas area for another day. Then it moves east and it will be affecting Louisiana and all areas to the north going all the way up into the Great Lakes and even parts of southern Canada. That right overhead, uh, Wednesday, will be right overhead the St. Louis area and the Chicago area and I know many forecasters were saying that the peak intensity of the heat would be on Tuesday, but it's very possible it's going to end up being on Wednesday. A dew point discussion is something which is necessary to discuss because that is really strange. The forecasted dew points I are from the National Weather Service and Others are saying that dew points will be between 65 and 70 degrees for many of the Midwest cities, which is not on par with what heat waves produce in the summertime. However, if you look at all of the computer models on the windy.com website, all of them, all five of them, all of them indicate that dew points will be in the mid-70s at some point. So I, listen, I mean, uh, the National Weather Service has many, many more resources than just windy.com, so if they're saying dew points would be between 65 and 70, so there's not <laughs> what what could we say? But uh, just <laughs> it's just strange that every single computer model on the windy.com website is showing dew points at some point in the mid 70s. In fact, it's even showing dew points in the low 80s for parts of Missouri and northern Arkansas. There's areas where dew points are going into the low 80s, and there's areas where dew points will be in the mid and upper 70s in northern Iowa. Again, okay, the, I, the National Weather Service says this isn't going to be happening. They, they, they're, that's not their forecast. Their forecast is probably 10 degrees lower than that. But it's a... Both of these things are a chiddush. I So I don't know what to make out of it because the European computer model, it, it's saying mid-70s for the St. Louis area, especially the St. Louis area. That's what it's saying Wednesday evening, especially Wednesday evening a sauna. That, okay, if it... Maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't happen. Uh, high temperatures going into the low 90s for many, many cities. Many cities, even Minneapolis, Minnesota, by Thursday will likely hit 90 degrees. Chicago will likely hit 90 degrees by Wednesday or Thursday, maybe even all three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. South Bend, Indiana, the story is that as you go a little bit further east, so the ridge is not quite as strong. That's what it seems like. The ridge breaks down slightly, but still summer-like temperatures expected for South Bend. Temperatures well into the 80s. I don't know about 90 degrees. But on the other hand, this ridge is actually going all the way up into Boston, Massachusetts. It's extending all the way up to Boston, Massachusetts. But not Baltimore and not New York. Not They're going to get like a little tinge of it, but not really. I mean, temperatures, they're being influenced by a low pressure system that's just barely moving by the Atlantic Ocean. And it's bringing northeasterly winds. Even Boston's being influenced by this right now. But this ridge is going to be affecting Boston. Boston has a chance of hitting 90 degrees this week. By the end of the week, Boston might hit 90 degrees, while the rest of the East Coast doesn't. The rest of the East Coast doesn't. I don't know. Maybe places north of Boston might hit 90 degrees. But the New York area probably won't. Probably won't. And Baltimore, surprisingly, it's hard to believe that they wouldn't. How could Boston hit 90 if Baltimore doesn't? So it's a really strange weather map. That's the thing is, is that by the time the ridge would get to Baltimore, it's it's a it's moving at a very strange. It's oriented southwest to northeast. By the time it would hit Baltimore, we already have a low pressure trough on the west coast, which is clobbering a low pressure system moving backwards into the northern Florida area, and they're gonna just turn into one large low pressure trough. So 
it's a strange weather map. It's difficult to even picture. You have to almost turn the country on a 90-degree angle and put make it so that Boston is just north of Chicago. If you can turn the map in such a way that you make it that Boston's just north of Chicago, you might be able to understand it. That's really what we're dealing with right now. So we have a low-pressure system that's been bringing dreary, rainy, unseasonably cold weather to much of this country. It's been around forever. It finally gets out of here, but then it makes a U-turn. Within just a few days, it starts to move backwards and go into northern Florida. Earlier today, some of the models were showing that this low-pressure system was going into the Gulf of Mexico, all the way there. Weather always goes from west to east, right? Well, not this week. The weather, that system's going... It's a lousy system, too, but it's going from east to west, and it's going to mess up the ridge. It's going to interfere with this high-pressure ridge. I'm just going to explain one thing about this high-pressure ridge, is uh, explain a little bit about what it is, but not completely. So what you have is you have high pressure. That means sinking air. You have an area of air that's sinking, and it's moving it's moving clockwise. The air is moving clockwise. So areas to the just to the west of the high-pressure will be experiencing a southerly flow. Areas to the east will be getting a northerly flow. So the high-pressure area, once it reaches the Mississippi River, that's when St. Louis starts to get the hot air. It has to be just a little bit east of the St. Louis area. This high-pressure ridge goes well up into the upper atmosphere. So it's an upper-level ridge. It's going really, really high up into the atmosphere. So what that does is it, adds a lot of pressure. There's additional air pressure that's being compressing. It's compressing the air underneath it and it's releasing energy and that energy has no place to go. So it becomes the, it gets translated into increasing temperatures. So we have a few reasons why St. Louis is going to get so hot this week. Number one, there's going to be a lot of sunshine. The atmosphere is becoming capped which is also connected to the high-pressure ridge, but could be other reasons too. Number two, we're going to have southwest St. Louis, initially southeast winds, eventually southwest winds. Either way, winds are from the south. And number three, it's this pressure, it's the... Uh, called compressional warming. That's what's going to be happening for the St. Louis area. Sometimes St. Louis also sees an increase in temperatures from winds going downslope the Ozark Plateau. The Ozark Plateau, who would have thought that the Ozarks could produce heat? That sometimes happens, and you get temperatures that go a little bit warmer than usual. So those things are coming together. That's going to bring record heat to the St. Louis area Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Monday, borderline record. Temperatures may hit 90 degrees all four days, and if not all four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The chances for thunderstorms get slimmer every hour. They get slimmer and slimmer, but it's still possible. Tuesday night, it's still possible, or Wednesday morning, it's still possible. And a thunderstorm could bust the forecast. It would turn the whole thing into a bust. In regards to the dew points, again, the National Weather Service is forecasting dew points to be a little bit lower than what they usually are in the summer. I always envision St. Louis during a heat wave, the classic heat wave, the dew point, I always picture of it being 72. So dew points would be in the upper 60s. But again, on the windy.com and the windy app, which is also reliable, but it's not the same resources. The National Weather Service has all the models, all of them, five of them, maybe even more all saying that at some point dew points will be in the mid 70s and not just that but it's it's not just at some point both the gf the main models the european computer model and the gfs model hour by hour by hour dew points in the 70s for wednesday for wednesday with temperatures in the low 90s that would translate to heat indices in the upper 90s possibly 100 degrees but According to the National Weather Service, we're going to see heat indices in the mid-90s, possibly upper 90s, because it is possible some areas may heat up into the mid-90s. This is an unusually strong and deep upper-level ridge. 
And again, it's on par with many of the record-breaking events that have taken place over the past 25 years, including the 1995 heat wave in July, the March 2012 heat wave, the 20, July 2012 heat wave, and many other heat waves. This is on par with that, and it's a record-breaker for this time of the year. It's almost a record-breaker for any time of the year, but it's a record-breaker. The number of miles that this thing go, goes up into the upper atmosphere is extremely very, very high up, and that's why we're not going to even have clouds. There's going to be a lot of sunshine. Temperatures are warm well, well up into the upper atmosphere. Now, dealing with some of the cities that are a little bit more complicated. So St. Louis is not really complicated. The only thing that can bust the forecast there is a thunderstorm. And even if there is a thunderstorm, it's unlikely anything will become a bust. You have Monday through Thursday, it's just heat and humidity. Okay, so now we have to deal with Chicago. Okay, so the official high, the forecasting a high temperature for Chicago, it could seem pretty easy. Okay, 90, 89, 90. But here's the problem. There's a very big problem here. And that is when you come get to Chicago, the high temperature does not reflect reality. Because, yeah, the high temperature might hit 89 or 90, but that's not going to be the temperatures in West Rogers Park during the afternoon hours every day this week. And people are going to be fooled. At least I can tell you from the past, climatologically speaking, West Rogers Park gets the lake wind. If there's any chance, if there's not a westerly component to the south wind, the lake takes over. That's just the way it is this time of the year, especially this time of the year. That's okay. So uh, you, you won't hear for there's no one forecasting like a specifically for West Rogers Park here in Chicago. So it's according to the European computer model, it shows this vividly happening Wednesday afternoon where temperatures get warm and then the lake takes over. That's the European computer model. The lake takes over full force. But even if you go according to the others, you still have to deal. The lake doesn't take over full force, but there still is some lake cooling that takes place. So West Rogers Park is complex, trying to figure out what the actual temperatures are going to be in the afternoon. To figure, even to figure out what the high temperature is going to be, it's also not so posture. It's not so simple. But in any case, 90 degrees to say that parts of the Chicago metro area will get into the low 90s. So you have the south side, you have Kankakee, they're, they're going to get into the low 90s. You have the west portions, they'll get into the low 90s. And uh, you'll probably, all it takes is a minute. You can get it to 90 in a minute. So you just have to hit 90 before the lake cold front comes by, and then you have it. So, And then going to South Bend, they don't have the same issue with the lake that Chicago has because their lake is positioned differently from the city. So South Bend temperatures are going to get warm. Maybe they will hit 90. I think they're going to stay a little bit under 90, mid to upper 80s, uh, although it's also going to be a little bit drier there. And if it's drier, temperatures might end up being warmer because of that. Minneapolis, Minnesota is... They have their days of complications because of the thunderstorms. There's a front around there, and the front position, the position of the front is going to be determined, a lot of times will be determined by the outflow of the thunderstorms. And although there's a general idea where these thunderstorms are going to form, but there's not an exact, no one knows exactly where they're going to happen and or if they're going to happen. So that means there's there's no exact no one knows for sure exactly where the front's going to be. And Minneapolis is going to be very close to the front, which is separating the cooler air from the warmer air. But I think Thursday, there's a lot of agreement that the front will be north of Minneapolis. So 90 degrees is a possibility for Minneapolis on Thursday. Probably Wednesday is Wednesday, probably mid or upper 80s. It's just Monday and Tuesday. But surprisingly, today, temperatures... I think went way up there today. I don't know if they hit 90 today, but it was like, like where did that come from? Temperatures, I think, upper 80s today. No one else is in the upper 80s. It's not even St. Louis is not that warm, and I don't know, Chicago certainly is not. So, I don't know. So anyways, so we have that high pressure ridge. It's going to move to just east of the Mississippi River. It's trapped. 
It's trapped because of that low pressure system on the Atlantic coast. And there's another low pressure trough on the west coast. And this ridge is stuck in between the two. This is the classic pattern that led to the northwest Pacific heat wave. The, height, the ridge is at the same height and it's the same pattern. It's, it's an omega block. It's a block. So the pattern is blocked and things are going in strange directions and strange things are happening the if, you know it is really strange for a dew point to get into the mid 70s and there must be models out there that are you know that are not saying mid 70s that are just not available to the public and climatologically speaking it makes a lot more sense. If you could find a model that's not saying 70s, it makes a lot more sense to just go according to what makes sense. You could find a model that's saying the 60s. Let's just go with that. It'll be in the 60s. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that's going on here doesn't make any sense. So, it, it, you know, in, uh, the Kansas City National Weather Service gave a good svar. They lo- gave good logic to why the dew points would be really high despite not having a cornfield. It, so, and that's because of all the floods. But to put another weird, to add one more really strange thing into this whole thing, the dew points on the Gulf Coast are going to drop. They're dropping into, because they're being affected. And they, this is impossible to understand. They're, the high pressure, which is in the northeast right now, over the New England area, that thing is going south, and that thing is also moving backwards and will be affecting Louisiana and parts of Texas. Their cold, dry air is going to be blowing in to southern Louisiana. It's not going to be cold by the time it reaches there, but the dew points are going to go down. So it's just totally backwards. You have water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are reported to be between 77 and 81. That translates to dew points between 67 and 71 for the Gulf Coast cities. Okay, and then the air moves up. If we would have cornfields right now, if there would be a Midwest Corn Belt, we would be able to increase those dew points by 5 to 10 degrees, putting dew points in the mid or upper 70s for the places in Iowa. We don't have those cornfields as far as I know, but we do have tons of flooding. So that's where the European computer model gets it from. That's what I think. And the GFS is just, uh, you know, they're just... I don't know where they're getting their thing from. But you look at the dew points in southern Louisiana, and they go way down into the low 60s. And the National Weather Service acknowledges this. This is not just something that is popping up on some model. The National Weather Service, is that's the actual forecast down there is that the dew points are going to go down as drier air gets blown into the area from this high pressure in New England. It is weird. that, that It's not a normal thing at all. But in any case... After this high pressure ridge, it breaks down a little bit, but it remains relatively strong all the way through the end of the week, and it heads over to the Boston area. And I don't think it's affecting areas to the south, I, at least from the mid-Atlantic area south. I don't think they're going to be affected by it. Or if they are, it's very minimal, nothing really too uh, impressive for them. It's going to be finished. It's just going to be broken down by the time it's it's just going to fall apart. The whole thing's going to fall apart. And then we go back to our active pattern for next week. Although to start off the week, we'll likely have above normal temperatures. We have that cold front, that trough from the west coast. Confidence has increased that it will indeed move across the country and bring a cold front through the area. Right now, the European computer model shows thunderstorms blasting through uh, St. Louis and Chicago sometime Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, I know some of the forecasts are indicating that a cold front will move through Friday night already. But, you know, on the other hand, you have uh, some models saying Saturday night. So there's reason to believe that the humidity might even continue through Sunday. The warmer temperatures might come to an end after Saturday, after Shabbos. And then we have that cooler air that would come in on Monday. The question is, how cool will it be? So, no. So far, there's no indication that we're going to be having anything significantly colder, like nothing significantly unusual, at least. Temperatures probably will be going back to normal for our area. Some of the 
uh, milestones were reached yesterday. Phoenix, Arizona reached 100 degrees for the first time yesterday. Many records were broken in Texas, and we're going to see many records broken over the next several days. Thank you for listening. I wish everyone a wonderful day.